sort of placeholder titles that were all terrible and at the uh, you know at the 11th hour my publisher suggested like you should just call it Ohio and I resisted it but I'm sure you know Simon Schuster has an algorithm that tells them what's going to sell the most books so the algorithm won as it should have. Donc, euh, Très rapidement, hein, je crois que tout le monde a compris, mais il a, il a, il, vraiment, il a montré beaucoup de résistance hein, par rapport à ce, à ce titre Ohio, et ils ont, visiblement, les éditeurs ont des, des algorithmes qui prédisent en fait, le, le, le succès que le livre va avoir en lien avec le titre qui a été choisi. Et de toutes les possibilités, c'était Ohio qui est arrivé en tête. Voilà. Euh, donc il a fini par l'accepter, il s'est un petit peu rendu <rire> à l'évidence du titre. Euh, donc, Stephen Markley est ici dans le cadre, euh, c'est donc des euh, auteurs en résidence, euh, dans le cadre du Festival América, euh, qui, je crois, n'a pas eu lieu depuis 4 ans, c'est ça Oui, d'accord. Et euh, donc, euh, les 10 ans, là, en septembre. Non, mais 20 ans. Les 20 ans, excusez-moi. Et la 10 édition. édition. C'est tous les 2 ans. C'est ça. Septembre. Voilà, d'accord. Là, juste là, en sept, ce septembre-là. D'accord, tout le mois de septembre. Oui. Oui. Euh, donc, on, euh, quelques mots pour ceux qui n'ont pas euh, lu le roman. Si on fait un, un deuxième sondage, combien d'entre vous ont effectivement pu lire Alors, c'est un roman volumineux quand même. D'accord. Ah, magnifique quand même. <rire> Alors, quelques mots sur, euh, sur le, le roman. Donc, euh, au cours d'une seule nuit, euh, en, en 2013, quatre. Euh, quatre euh, lycéens reviennent dans euh, leur, euh, la ville où ils ont grandi, qui s'appelle euh, New Canaan, donc le Nouveau Canaan, euh, qui est aussi une ville fictive, que Stephen Marquet a, a joliment euh, inventé le nom, parce qu'il expliquait, je crois, dans une interview, que les, les consonances étaient très... Euh, enfin, euh, reprenaient un petit peu les consonances des, des, des lieux dits, des villes, etc., de l'Ohio profond. Euh, et donc, quatre chapitres, euh, différents quatre personnages et aussi quatre morts dans le, dans le roman qui finalement se lit, euh, se lit comme, un, euh, comme un polar on pourrait dire would you say it's a thriller or that the structure is a thriller like structure I, I definitely think it has elements of that for sure yeah. as well yes, as yes. many other, other I, things I think I'm drawn to the propulsivity of writing to like giving a novel that kind of uh, even if you don't realize why that page turning quality. Okay. Yeah. Right. The, the page turning quality, c'est cette espèce d'élan qui, qui nous fait ne jamais poser le livre en fait et qui finalement est, est un petit peu la définition d'un polar. On lit aussi des polars justement pour cette, cet élan qu'on a à ne jamais euh, à toujours poursuivre le fil du récit jusqu'au bout. Yeah, I'm, I'm convinced that you can write something with depth that also is interesting to read. Is that it? Is that it? Yes, absolutely. Is that it? 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 Is that it?
Euh, alors, pour revenir aux, aux quatre personnages, donc dans cette petite ville fictive du, du nord de l'Ohio, euh, d'abord Bill Ashcraft, qui est un activiste, euh, qui est aussi euh, drogué et, euh, et surtout alcoolique, et qui revient euh, cette nuit-là euh, dans, dans sa ville natale euh, avec un paquet un colis dont on ne sait pas grand chose en fait et qu'il a dissimulé euh, sous, euh, sous son, son camion euh, ça c'est le premier personnage et qui en fait correspond donc à la, 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 le premier chapitre du livre euh, le deuxième est plutôt consacré euh, au personnage de Stacy Moore qui est doctorante euh, et euh, qui revient en fait, en, en quelque sorte, régler ses comptes avec, euh, avec sa famille et surtout avec la mère de sa première petite amie euh, au lycée, euh, son amie Lisa, euh, euh, qui, euh, qui en fait a disparu. Euh, et l'histoire d'amour entre ces deux femmes est un petit peu, euh, je dirais, le, le cœur du récit, la colonne vertébrale de, de, de l'ensemble du récit. Would you say that what happens between Stacy and Lisa is actually the core of the narrative? It's what? The core, the heart of it. I, I mean, I think the character of Lisa, for reasons that cannot be revealed, it, like, is sort of the, the central player that all four of those people are, are revolving around uh, the entire book. Yeah. Okay. Donc, le, le personnage de Lisa, c'est vraiment... Le, alors, Bien sûr, euh, si vous n'avez pas dit, enfin, pour ceux qui ont lu le livre, vous savez pertinemment de, pourquoi le personnage de Lisa est central. Euh, pour ceux qui ne l'ont pas lu, euh, c'est difficile de, 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 de rentrer dans les détails sans déflorer justement le, le sens de l'intrigue. Mais c'est vraiment cette, cette, euh, le personnage pivot autour duquel euh, toutes les autres histoires euh, s'articulent, ou auxquelles toutes les autres histoires s'articulent. C'est ce qui les réunit tous. Troisième euh, personnage central, Dan Eaton, euh, qui est un vétéran de la guerre d'Irak, euh, qui revient en fait euh, un peu en morceaux de, de, du combat, qui a perdu un œil, euh, et euh, qui essaye de renouer avec l'une de ses flammes de, 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 du lycée, justement. Euh, et le dernier personnage, le quatrième et dernier chapitre, euh, un, un chapitre qui s'articule autour euh, de la protagoniste Tina, Tina Ross, qui était euh, une très jolie fille au lycée, euh, qui, euh, qui a, disons, euh, certaines velléités, certains dessins assez sombres, qui va droguer son fiancé, et qui revient justement euh, à, à euh, New Canaan pour des raisons... Don't, yeah, don't reveal too much. <laughs> On ne peut pas révéler, exactement. Non, 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 just, you know, yeah. saying that she, we won't say why yeah. she comes sure. back, let's sure. say. That. You can see people in the audience right now, like, this book sounds good, I would, I would pick that up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, voilà, donc, en fait, c'est quatre, quatre chapitres, quatre personnages principaux, euh, quatre morts aussi, euh, et cette, cette, cette dynamique du polar. Euh, ce qui fait que, en fait, on a, euh, on a toute une galerie de personnages euh, qui, qui interagissent à des degrés divers, qui ne se connaissent pas tous, mais quand même, euh, qui ont tous plus ou moins ce passé commun euh, dans un, de l'âge du lycée, en fait, qui, dans la culture américaine, a, a vraiment... Euh, il, y a une, une très, il y a beaucoup de littérature sur euh, ces, ces années lycée, et il y a aussi beaucoup de, de films qui ont été adaptés sur les années lycée. Uh, that's something I wanted to ask you about, you know, the, the high school years, because there's, there's a whole mythology about these high school, high school years, which probably doesn't compare with what happens in, in a country like ours, for instance. Well, why is that? Just because of the way the education system is structured, or how does, what's the difference? Probably. Um, maybe because... <laughs> well, I, I think that those teenage years are impactful no matter what country you're, you come up, you're raised in. It's, it's like, that's when, you know, you're not a child anymore, but you're also not an adult. And you, you're stretching for that, but you're not quite connecting in that way. And, you know, uh, what happens in those years almost like haunts you more than, than at any other time in your life. New Canaan is a small village, right? Or a small town? Small town, yeah. High schools in small towns 
are very special, very particular. Not like in France. Sure. Okay. Not like the lycée or yes. uh, a, a college yes. in France. Very, very different. But why? The question was, what's because, different? Because as, as, as Mr. Markley just said, it's, a, it's a very concentrated, a very concentrated uh, period of time for young adults. And you make a lot of good friends, lasting friends at that period of time. Interesting. I was I was wondering about whether this you know was actually happening in in, in France, for instance. I would say, and the students here may disagree, but um, the, the long-lasting friendships that you actually mentioned, uh, would you would rather strike those uh, in the early years of college, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Controversial <Sarah>? topic. <laughs> okay. Just, yes, in, in just a few words, just to clarify the difference. Um, the difference uh, between uh, college and universe uh, in high school. Yes, the, the, those heroes in high school that are the heart of Mr. Markley's uh, book, <laughs> and 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 uh, you know what happens actually here in France. Uh, so. Uh, High school uh, in France, uh, the model is, uh, I guess, uh, very different uh, in France uh, compared to the USA. Um, we don't have uh, a lot of uh, activities. We have some, but uh, and um, the structure is uh, different. Also, we don't have uh, a case. No, I, I hear what everybody's saying. I think, though, when you're 17, you really you want to have sex, you want to hang out with people, you want to try drugs and alcohol. And it's like all those forces that dust tend to like intrude upon young people's lives arrive kind of at the same time. So it's more about like the impulse of the impulses of youth and how uh, these characters' lives in this town are, are you know sort of fragmented by those impulses, but also by the structural systems above them that they have no interaction with, but. Uh, you know, they're pushing against them throughout their lives. Est-ce que quelqu'un a besoin de traduction? Alors, ce récit très sombre, c'est ça, c'est quelque chose qui, qui ressort donc, de, du livre. C'est la première, la première chose qu'on qu ressent quand on lit le livre. The, 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 the somber take on uh, post 9-11 America. Yeah. I mean, why so dark? Well, I mean, look where we are. I, you know, like, I, after I, I got that question so many times when I was on tour, and I was kind of like, well, look the fuck around. Like, I mean, it's look at what happened. Um, like, so look, my, my adulthood has been defined by, I was 18 on 9-11. I was in a classroom, that's how we found out. Uh, immediately, people I knew began to go fight in the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, I went to college and uh, university and graduated into the worst economic crisis <laughs> the country had had uh, you know, since the 1930s. Um, and to cap it off, I come home in those years following, and all these people I knew and had gone to school with were dead of heroin overdoses. Uh, and so the book, I feel like, was a reflection of what I was seeing in my young adulthood. And I think for, for all those years, I was searching for a way to write about this that wasn't didactic and didn't sort of like come across as a, a, you know, a screed, as invective, but to look through the eyes of characters at what had gone on in the country. That's a lot, I'm sorry. I'm giving you a lot to translate. Ah, oh, but I think you understand the essential, but in fact, this generation in particular, finally, the environment in which she is, she is arrivée at the age of adulthood, euh, ne, il ne pouvait pas y avoir euh, une conjoncture aussi négative ou il n'y avait pas eu une conjoncture aussi négative depuis la grande dépression des années 30 euh, et, et en fait les, les raisons sont multiples la crise des opioïdes euh, tout ce qui arrive au niveau environnemental euh, la guerre, les guerres en Irak et en Afghanistan et donc il, la, beaucoup de ses amis qui sont partis sur le front euh, bah, certains ne sont jamais revenus où certains reviennent justement euh, durablement euh, blessés et d'un point de vue psychologique et physiquement. Et donc, c est, c est, ça, euh, pardon, 
ça, ça, ça crée cette, cette atmosphère extrêmement sombre euh, qui, qui est vraiment l'empreinte du, du roman. Um, about the characters' perspectives, um, uh, you know, they, of course they do not always rhyme. Um, and, and what, you know, uh, the, the, the question of truth, you know, the, the, the truth of all those voices, yeah. I mean, how does it work? I mean, I think one of the keys to the novel is that when you are in a character's perspective, you're only seeing the world through their perspective. And that's not always necessarily right. I mean, I, if you're a literature student, you always hear about the unreliable narrator, right? But I think more so than that, I wanted to bring the realism of perspective to each of the characters so that they are seeing events only through their eyes, and it's not always the same between people. And I, that's, that was something I, I found vital when I was editing the book. It's like, they can't, like, these people do not all see this the same way. Alors la question c'était sur le, cette fragmentation des perspectives en fait, hein, des points de vue dans le, dans le roman. Euh, et ce qui l'intéressait c'était vraiment de, 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 de regarder de, de, du point de vue de chacun des personnages. Euh, et bien sûr les, les, les points de vue sont radicalement différents parfois, euh, parfois en certaines similitudes, mais la plupart du temps euh, divergent vraiment sur ce, 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 cet univers assez sombre donc, euh, euh, vers lequel certains reviennent quand ils rentrent du front. Euh, que d'autres ont eu beaucoup de mal à quitter, que certains n'ont jamais quitté. Euh, et ce qui l'intéressait, c'était vraiment cette, euh, de, de se mettre complètement, enfin de voir le monde vraiment euh, avec les yeux de tel ou tel personnage. Euh, on page 106, uh, <laughs> this, this, you know, the, the, you have those uh, words that I suppose you know you were asked questions about so often in, in your interviews. But when when Bill uh, meets Kayleen again, and he says, "Sure, he'd left some stuff out, but he figured narrators were always conveniently forgetting essential shit." In the last decade, everyone had learned to be a truth masseuse. Mm -hmm. I I, I It's great writing, right? Like that is fire. Donc cette idée de, de vraiment malaxer la vérité et donc faire quelque chose qui n'est pas celle de, du voisin, euh, qui est radicalement différent. Could, could you comment on this a little bit more, please? Yeah, I mean, it, it sort of goes back to what I was talking about earlier when, you know, in 2018 when people are like, Ohio's too dark, and you know, looking back at America now, you're like, I don't think it was fucking dark enough. You know, like it's it's. The places we've come from, from when this book was written, or when it was conceived, let's say, to now, uh, the ability of our, like, our government and our elite to lie to us has been like, exponentially improved upon. Um, and those, you know, I, I had this like, theory, I guess, or like everybody believed that George W. Bush and the, uh, you know, the lies told to bring us into war in Iraq, that would be the worst thing that would happen in our lifetime, right? Like, there's nothing that's going to top that. Um, and we just keep getting these exciting new iterations of um, our politicians and our economic elite and their enablers in the media who, uh, you know, frankly top all of that by, by leaps and bounds. So um, I think what I was writing about then was a lot about Iraq and Afghanistan and what had happened in the Great Recession uh, with the bailouts and all that other stuff. Uh, but, you know, in the last ten or five years has really Uh, reached a level that, you know, well, in my new book, you'll find out, but, yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully you tell us about your new book soon enough. Um, donc, en fait, les, est, il, est, il est très étonné par, euh, par la, la, la façon dont, euh, justement, on a euh, déformé la vérité au fil des, disons, cinq dernières années. Il pensait que euh, quand, il a, quand, il, euh, quand euh, Stephen Marquet écrivait le livre, il y a déjà quelques années, euh, on avait atteint un niveau de, 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 de contournement de la vérité qui était déjà assez, euh, assez élevé euh, sous l'air bouche avec, euh, avec les différentes guerres euh, et surtout euh, ce que, ce que euh, voulait bien dire euh, à la population américaine, par exemple les élites euh, économiques. Euh, mais là, au fil des, des cinq dernières années, c'était vraiment exponentiel. La dérive a été spectaculaire. Et donc il, est, euh, il a... Il, il a vraiment, euh, là je trouve qu'avec cette expression là, euh, euh, c'est difficile à traduire, hein, truth masseuse, la, une masseuse de la vérité, c'est vraiment cette idée de, de, de la, la, 
la contourner, en même temps la tordre dans tous les sens. Euh, et c'est vraiment une image qui est, qui est assez centrale dans le, euh, dans le roman et surtout euh, qui, qui finalement euh, traduit bien aussi cette idée que euh, sans pour autant, euh, comment dire, sans prendre directement à, à cette grande notion de vérité, chacun a sa propre vérité, euh, ou même, voire même, euh, euh, va un petit peu écorner celle des autres. Et donc, euh, la, la, la structure narrative euh, est, est, est colle bien à cette image. Um, the, the, the characters are actually fields of contradictions. Um, and um, it, it's, at, at some point, it's really hard to pinpoint what, what unites them Uh, besides the deeply ingrained sense of disillusionment, marginalization, and of course those high school years that are so important in the American system, okay? So um, the, the, those deep primal connections, um, some, of, some of these connections do not survive. The connections between the characters? The characters. Yeah, I mean, I, I got this question the other night at another... Sorry. Uh, no, 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 I, I, I'm, you know, reflecting upon it, where, where the question was, you know, like, there's no, like, where's the love, it was like something about the love story, the absence of a love story within it, and I think, like, it's all about, it, it is a love story, it's a love story between all these people who cared so much for each other in their youth, and then somehow have been blown apart, have been, have been rent apart, right, um, and sort of the ghost that exists between all these different people, who in other circumstances would be those lifelong friends, would have, uh, you know, sort of marched beside each other into life, but now have, have been lost uh, to one another. So I think that's sort of the, where a lot of the, not, the, not just the angst of the novel, but sort of the, um, like the melancholy of it comes from, is, is this disillusionment of the love between people who otherwise would have shared something great in their lifetimes. Donc, le, le, en fait, c'est aussi un roman sur la, la dissolution de ces liens qui, qui réunissaient si si puissamment ces, ces différents euh, protagonistes euh, pendant ces années-là. Oui. Est-ce que c'est euh, -ce est, est -ce est à cause de le fait que ces quatre personnes sont parties Est-ce que c'est parce que ces quatre personnes sont parties de New Canaan Parce que je ne suis pas sûr que les personnes qui habitent toujours à New Canaan et qui habitent depuis toujours à New Canaan ont la même euh, attitude, bon, euh, je pense hein, qu'il y, y a quand même une différence entre les quatre personnes euh, qui sont dans le livre. So do you think that do, do you want me to do you want me to say it in English? Well, you'll you'll say it much better than I will. Uh, these four persons have all left Nukaden, yeah. right? All left Nukaden when they were young, yeah. right? So they have a different perspective. Now the persons who have remained in Nukaden. Okay, all of their buddies. I'm not sure that they, the, 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 the people that remained in New Canaan have the same view of the, uh, uh, of the world situation or the situation. Okay, uh, I come from a very small town in southern Vermont. We have an alumni association, Vermont High School. So I'm very connected to the situation in your book. And I see what the difference is between my situation, I left a long, long time ago, and the friends that I have, the, the, I have many friends still in my hometown, they don't have the same perspective. And I'm just asking you whether that's the same thing that you've seen. Yeah, no, I think that's exactly right. Um, you know, I think, I, especially in the States, there's a situation where the, the metropoles, the major cities, draw like draw anybody who's talented or who wants to like make something of themselves. So you go to New York, LA, Chicago, Los Angeles, Atlanta, one of these places where you can make money, frankly make a, a real living, but rents are extremely high and it sucks to be there. Or you can stay in your small town where rents are low, but there are no jobs. And it's sort of the way the economy has been pulled apart like taffy, um, but by forces totally outside of people's control, right? Um, and in that sense, people who stay behind then form very different viewpoints of the world. And then we all sit around and wonder why everybody's like, so, you know, why is that person like that? I don't know. Uh, and we all get furious about it. Um, 
but it's it's you develop like you said that very different outlook on things uh, and I mean that's a much deeper sort of philosophical political question but in terms of the novel it is about that difference and the one character who actually didn't really leave is Tina you know she she moved a few towns over to get away but she essentially lives in a different version of New Canaan down the road and I think Tina's perspective is very different from the other three characters who've sort of been out in the wider world and seen a lot. Um, so. Donc juste pour, pour résumer, parce que je pense que vous avez compris l'essentiel, c'est euh, la question portée sur cette différence de perspective. Quand certains des personnages principaux, eux, ont bien, bien quitté la, la, la petite ville en question, euh, et la façon dont ils regardent ce qui se passe, le, la désinfection, désindustrialisation, le, la crise des opioïdes, etc. Et les liens qu'ils forment, qu'ils ont formés, euh, et les autres qui sont restés, ou qui, comme Tina, comme le, le personnage de Tina, euh, a juste, s'est juste déplacé de quelques kilomètres. Euh, et du coup, les, 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 la, les, les différences de point de vue sont absolument magistrales. Euh, et, et ça influe aussi sur la, 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 la qualité de, de, des liens. If you don't mind, um, um, could you could you read a passage? There's one passage that you know haunted me after having read it for quite some time. On pages 97 to 98, it's the you know the, the talk that Dakota has with Bill when Dakota tells Bill that he also went Columbine if you remember, on kids who mattered. So uh, it's, it's absolutely blood curdling. So if you don't mind, you know, this, this uh, 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 on pages, which right there. Uh, yes, so this passage starting here. Down to the... Yes, the, down to basement, maybe. Okay. So the next paragraph over. Uh, okay, so this is Dakota, a guy Bill has run into on that night. Uh, Mike, he's saying, my senior year would have been your junior. Dakota replaced the gun in the back of his jeans and Bill felt the anguish of relief. He still didn't dare twitch, let alone stand and try to leave. I thought I might kill some people at school. Bill waited and when he didn't say more, asked, how do you mean? Those kids who did Columbine, Cleveland and Harris, I like read about them, studied them, dreamed about them. I just thought how cool would it be to be remembered like that? You know, no one would, no, no one would remember anybody from New Canaan, Ohio, ever again except me. It would be a me day. So I brought a gun to school, my mom's, and I was planning on walking into the cafeteria and just start mowing fuckers down. I didn't know if I could break Klebold and Harris's record, but I thought I could come close. Bill's throat clicked. Depending on what lunch period Dakota was talking about, he thought of how cruelty created chain reactions, how one act could set off events, could eat through floors like acid. So to think of all the systemic cruelty in the world was to think of acid burning from one floor of a skyscraper down to the basement. Thank you. Thank you very much. Donc en fait c'est 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 un, un je trouve un, un passage du livre qui est, qui est vraiment euh, euh, très frappant. C'est euh, ça fait référence bien sûr au massacre de, de du lycée euh, Columbine et dont Roger Moore avait tiré le, le film mm -hmm. Bowling for uh, Columbine en 2002 je crois. Um, and so my question is the following. Uh, it, it seems that you give yourself somehow the freedom to re-narrate, to somehow recreate some form of almost aloe history, an um, alternative version of what happened in, uh, um, um, in Columbine, uh, reshaping therefore this horrifying story that Moore, Roger Moore actually talked about in his movie. Um, so could you comment on, on, on you know, Dakota's impulse and, and, and his decision not to act, you know, in the end. Yeah, I mean, well, I think for any American student, Columbine was a seminal moment. I mean, I was uh, in eighth grade, which is middle school, so before high school. Um, but, you know, you, you think about that every single day for the rest of your life. And now, in, I mean, the state's like, you walk into a grocery store, you think about it. You walk, you go to a concert, you think about it. Um, and I just think, in, in what I was getting at with that, is that this this idea of like the disillusionment that is that has reached so deep into some people that the best outlet they can think of is to murder as many other human beings as possible, because it will run it creates some kind of power, right? Um, and so for a character like Dakota, 
um, who has been discarded by you know his society basically, who is a drug dealer living on the margins and, and sort of uh, imagining himself having power is central to his identity, um, and I, which is a situation I think a lot of people find themselves in. Uh, and the point of that passage is not that he didn't kill a bunch of people because he was suddenly, his conscience won out, it's because he was like, eh. <laughs> you know? It was like, yeah, I don't know if that's worth it, maybe it's boring, I don't know. It's like, it was an aberration that he didn't do it. Not that he was like, suddenly, you know, overcome by, by love for his fellow human beings. Which I think is like, unfortunately more sort of true to the, the narrative going on inside his head than anything else. Thank you. Donc en fait, le, ce, ce passage est vraiment euh, euh, terrifiant parce que c'est pas tant le fait qu'il... Euh, qu la, la raison n'est pas tant de son renoncement à, à prendre un, un pistolet ou quoi que ce soit, des armes en tout cas, et à tuer ses camarades, euh, soit un sentiment d'amour de, de, de son prochain, euh, soit au contraire un sentiment de... de, de absolument coupable d'avoir eu ses pensées, mais tout simplement que bon, finalement il a, il, a, il a décidé que ça, le jeu n'en valait pas la chandelle. Euh, et donc euh, le, le, ce que ça traduit euh, comme euh, sentiment d'impuissance euh, est encore plus terrifiant. Euh, et c'est vraiment un, 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 je trouve un tournant dans le livre et euh, ça, euh, encore une fois, ça inscrit bien euh, ce, ce que sentent beaucoup de, de ces personnages-là, c'est-à-dire euh, un horizon totalement bouché et une, une façon d'être traité par ses pairs euh, et par le monde dans son ensemble euh, comme euh, un détritus, quelque chose qui n'a absolument pas d'importance. Euh, et il y a beaucoup de réactions qui sont assez similaires à celle de, de Dakota, cette espèce de rage euh, intériorisée qui peut ou ne peut pas justement euh, devenir létale à un moment donné. Et là, c'est vraiment, euh, finalement, ça se joue à à très peu de choses, qui n'est pas reproduit euh, ce, ce qui s'est passé euh, à Columbine, qui, euh, euh, dit Stephen Markley, a marqué euh, évidemment tous les esprits, en particulier euh, les esprits des collégiens, des lycéens, euh, qui étaient bien sûr euh, en cours hein, quand, euh, quand le massacre s'est passé, euh, et quand donc tous ces... Euh, tous ces... ces euh, High schoolers, enfin high school students, donc ces lycéens ont été euh, massacrés. Um, I meant to ask you why, because that was one of the first, you know, that's how I started um, uh, introducing your work. Why may, maybe you, what made you embrace fiction this time, rather than non-fiction, which you uh, have actually, um, you know, tackled before? Yes, yeah, I mean, I, I had. That. I have a bored career as a memoirist. Uh, and I, I think, I, you know, like that, that was what was working for me. Like, this is what I always wanted to do. I wanted to write novels. I wanted to uh, tackle fiction because I think it's the hardest thing to do. It's, you know, I once heard somebody describe it as the Navy SEALs of writing. It's, it's like the most difficult thing to write a novel. Um, but it's hard. I mean, it's really, really hard. Uh, and so I don't think I was ready for it. And so I spent a lot of time journalism and writing essays um, and I got a few books published in, in that vein with like a lot more humor to them uh, and then eventually decided I, I that's not what I wanted to do and I was exhausted by it I was exhausted by myself um, and that's when I started turning to Ohio in, in, in that story in, um, in earnest Donc en fait, le, le, ce passage là ce saut de, de de quelque chose qui n'était pas du tout euh, fictionnel, à, à la forme du roman. C'est quelque chose qu'il a toujours voulu faire, mais euh, euh, il a pris d'autres chemins d'abord, parce qu'en fait, le niveau de difficulté est, est vraiment euh, très élevé. Voilà, C'était toujours un rêve qu'il avait, mais euh, il n'arrivait pas à, à passer à cette étape-là. Et donc, il a eu euh, finalement un certain succès avec, euh, avec les, les deux euh, ouvrages là, de, de non-fiction euh, qu'il a, qu a publiés avant. Il est passé par le journalisme, euh, et puis il s'est dit qu'il fallait vraiment qu'il euh, réalise en fait euh, ce rêve d'écriture euh, euh, et de devenir un, 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 un romancier. Et c'est là qu'il a, euh, qu a euh, en fait candidaté. 
pour le euh, Iowa Writers euh, Program, qui est un, euh, un programme d'écriture créative extrêmement sélectif euh, et qu'il a été accepté. Et donc à partir de là, il a, euh, il a pu euh, avancer un petit peu euh, son, euh, son roman. Uh, do, do you inscribe your, your novel in a specific uh, tradition, a specific lineage, either the tree or whichever? Uh, I, I don't, I just know an embarrassingly small amount about literature, uh, if that makes sense. Like, somebody asked, somebody asked me to write an essay about, like, why I had chosen to write a great, so, like, a social novel when that was so out of vogue, and I was like, I didn't know that's what I'd done, and I don't know what a social novel is, and I don't know anything else about what you're talking about, so I can't write that essay. Um, I, I think it's, 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 a, my idea of writing is you are compelled by the story that is inside of you. And if you're aiming for anything else, if you're aiming to be the next Jonathan Franzen, Toni Morrison, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, on and on and on, then you're going to fail. But if you tell the story that you absolutely have to tell, you, not, you might fail too, but, you know, you'll be a little closer, I guess. Well, you didn't fail. Um, Thank you. Donc, en fait, euh, euh, il ne s'inscrit pas particulièrement dans une ligne de pensée spécifique où il n'a pas de grand parrain. Mais il avait surtout une, une histoire euh, à, à exprimer, euh, et c'est ça qui l'a guidé. Et quelqu'un lui a dit un jour, mais pourquoi est-ce que vous faites un roman social alors que c'est totalement euh, désuet, en fait, c'est pas assez de mode. Il a dit, je ne savais même pas que euh, ça s'appelait comme ça. Euh, donc en fait, c'est vraiment cette, cette nécessité d'écrire une histoire qu'il a habitée pendant très longtemps, euh, finalement, qu'il a tout simplement guidé pendant ses années d'écriture. Euh, which brings me to Fatima. Let's see, yes. What a monster. Oh my god. Let's just trash her and then put this on the internet. Uh, so I read at some point that you, you met her. Uh, so Fatima, uh, Farin Mirza is a writer that uh, uh, you, you invited uh, and we interviewed and, and, and some of my students were actually two years ago, right? Was it three? Three, three years ago. Um, um, and, and she wrote this wonderful book, which is called A Place for Us. So she's of uh, Muslim, Indian Muslim descent. And she wrote about how her family had to make a place, you know, for, for her, for her brother, her sisters. And, um, and uh, that's why it's called A Place for Us. And actually, the, the, just for the, you know, uh, uh, some of my students are now currently writing their master's memoir on Fatima's books. Okay. So well, thanks for looking at mine. I appreciate that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you're, you're next. <laughs> uh, so uh, I, I was wondering, um, do you feel some kind of, of kinship with the type of um, alienation that she tackles in her book and, and narrative complexity that she uses as well? Well, I. I I think Fatima and I had this weird experience because our, we came into Iowa together. Our books were sort of published concurrently. Um, and so we both got the chance to read them at sort of the same time. And we had this phone call afterwards where we were both like, do we write the same thing? Like what? And not that the, like, the race of the characters is different, the genders are different, but like the thematic parts of those books are really similar. And I, I was so struck by it. And it's a beautiful, gorgeous, amazing book. Um, I was so struck by how uh, familiar it felt. Uh, and I just, I thought that was, I think that's like the miracle of literature though, is that like, it's, it's so different than a movie, than, than a television show, because you are inside the psychology of, of someone else. Um, and you're living in their brain for the duration of, of the piece. Uh, and I, I just thought it was so remarkable. But, um, I'm sorry, you about to translate that and then we'll do the rest of the question. That's good. Well, some of it, I uh, je, crois, je crois que vous avez un petit peu euh, compris. Hein, le, le... Donc, il a rencontré Fatima Farid Mirza pendant ce, euh, ces années euh, au, à l'atelier d'écriture de, 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 créative, qui est encore une fois vraiment euh, quelque chose de, enfin, une, une structure extrêmement particulière, très sélective, et où ne sont acceptés que euh, des gens qui ont du talent. Euh, et donc, euh, en fait, les deux livres, A Place for Us, de Fatima, et euh, le livre de Stephen Hartley, ont été quasiment publiés au même moment. Et euh, ils ont beaucoup échangé pendant que, euh, leurs années euh, dans, dans l'atelier de, de, de l'Iowa. Et effectivement, il était très surpris de voir que 
euh, dans le livre de Fatima Farid Mirza, qui, qui parle euh, d'une communauté différente, avec donc des, euh, tout un univers euh, bien à elle qui n'a rien à voir avec euh, celui de, de, des personnages de son roman, combien les, les similitudes étaient frappantes. Euh, tout ce qui est euh, le, le, euh, le, le, ce qui se passe là dans cette caméra obscura, hein, ce, dans le, 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 le the stream of consciousness hein, de, de, de chaque personnage, donc dans l'intériorité des, des pensées, la façon d'exprimer, de rentrer dans la tête d'un personnage, euh, et la, le the treatment of flashbacks too. Mm. Was that something that you you know you commented on both of you you know? use the flashback structure quite a lot. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, I, I don't know. Like, I don't think it's a pretty, like, common uh, thing to root around in. That, but, uh, you know, I, I was writing a book that was informed by the events of the past. It required and necessitated flashback. Um, I, I don't think it would have worked without it. So. I can't speak to Fatima. I don't know how she did it. <laughs> Sarah, do you want to ask a question about, about this, maybe? No. No? You do? No. I'm, I'm talking to Sarah. Do you want to say a few words? Well, um, I, wanted, I wanted to know regarding your relationship with books. Um, like, can you tell us a little bit more? About what exactly? Like your relationship with books in general, like how I uh, became a reader as a kid, or like what I'm reading now, or like what what uh, all of it, all of it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I you know I I wasn't as cool as I am now back when I was a kid. Okay, I don't want to shock anybody here, but um, you know I was a I was a nerd and I loved to read and I, I you know I enjoyed it so much. Uh, and kind of one of those kids who wanted to read whatever like his parent like people wouldn't let him. So they're trying to hand you like the young adult books uh, at school, and I'm like, I'm gonna read Stephen King's Gerald's Game, uh, where this woman's chained to a bed and murders her husband. Like that seems like the kind of thing I'd be interested in when I was 11, right? Uh, and I think like that sort of inborn love of of reading took a leap from you know gruesome horror novels uh, to when I when I first read Kurt Vonnegut, right? Like Slaughterhouse Five. That was sort of the first book when I was ever like. Oh, holy shit, great literature doesn't have to be boring. It can be weird and unexpected and bizarre. Um, and that's sort of, it's like those, those steps you take as a young person that, that set you off on a different course. And suddenly you're like, hold on, I've got to read everything by everybody. Uh, I can't leave any stone unturned. And, you know, that, that great feeling of like, I will definitely die without having read some book that I would have loved. Yeah, thank you. And another question. Can you tell us a bit more about your writing process? Yeah, um, I had this professor who said the only phrase I, I've ever thought was useful about writing, uh, which is the only secret to it is apply ass to chair, right? So you have to sit down and actually do it in order for it to produce writing. Like it doesn't just cook up when you're not there. So I am I am so strictly a get up every morning, drink my coffee. It's like right when I get that jolt of caffeine. And I'm just like, oh shit, I'm a genius. And then just like, blah, blah, blah. and then of course it's all garbage and you have to like go back and fix it all. But uh, it's, it's that sense of like, if you do it every day for an hour and, th and that's it, like you're still gonna produce something. Um, and sometimes I'll go two, three, but like rarely more than that. And I just think it's like, I've always told my students, if you just sit down and keep doing it and keep doing it, that's the most effective writing technique there is. Um, I know some writers who are very precious about it and sort of like need the inspiration to strike and I just disagree with that philosophy. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Alors, j'imagine que vous avez compris l'essentiel aussi, mais juste pour revenir sur, euh, sur les points saillants, euh, quand il était, euh, même pas adolescent, très adolescent en fait, hein, vers, vers l'âge de 11 ans, il, il lisait surtout des, des, des romans d'horreur, comme par exemple Stephen King, et il a, les romans de King, et il a découvert en fait que, que quand on lisait euh, euh, d'autres types de littérature, euh, on pouvait tout à fait être complètement conquis et que le, le, on n'avait pas à être, euh, à s'ennuyer en lisant euh, autre chose. Donc il a décidé de lire vraiment tout, finalement. Et donc 
donc c'était un lecteur euh, extrêmement exigeant et vorace. Euh, et euh, je pense que c'est ça, donc ça, ça rejoint la question de Sarah, c'est ce qui lui a aussi donné envie de, de savoir comment fonctionnait le processus de l'écriture. Euh, et sur cette question plus particulièrement, euh, quand Sarah lui a demandé euh, comment il s'y prenait, il a répondu, bah, en fait c'est un job, on se lève chaque matin, euh, et euh, on commence à écrire, on se force à écrire et on produit peut-être une page, deux pages, trois pages, mais en tout cas on le fait tous les jours sur une base régulière. Euh, et visiblement c'était aussi euh, le conseil que l'un de ses professeurs lui avait donné, et il faut absolument s'atteler à la tâche et faire ça euh, sur une base régulière. Um, there's something else that, of course, you know, is quite obvious in, in the novel and, and, and gripping it. Um, I was wondering, you know, is there a kind of, let's say, quintessentially uh, American dimension about uh, the form of multidimensional violence that you describe in your uh, novel? I, I can't speak to if it's uniquely American. Um, I. I I just think the violence of the novel reflects the violence of the society that I came of age in, and the society that continues to, I believe, get more and more violent uh, as, as the years progress and our, uh, our culture and our democracy come under increasing pressure, right? So when I hear the book is violent, I'm like, okay, I accept that. But also, I watched on television when a mob of people stormed a capital, the US Capitol, and killed seven people. So, you know, I, I feel like the book reflects accurately what is going on within the culture and society at large. Donc, sur, le, sur cette dimension très violente là, de, de, de son roman, en fait, euh, il accepte parfaitement l'adjectif le, le, roman violent ou avec des scènes violentes, mais finalement, c est, c est, c est, ce type de violence euh, ne fait que refléter la société dans laquelle euh, il a grandi, dans laquelle il est devenu adulte. Euh, et ne fait que continuer à refléter, et là aussi de manière quasi exponentielle, ce qui se passe. Et bien sûr, en témoigne par exemple ce qui s'est passé il y a un an avec l'assaut sur le Capitole. Je vous ai vu réagir, est-ce que non, vous voulez... Oui, parce qu'il y, une... y, une... y a une grande différence d'âge entre nous, et effectivement, cette violence est quand même assez récente, pour les jeunes. Hein donc, euh, je, M. Marclay a bien fait la différence. C'est dans l'époque dans où il a grandi qu'il a senti cette violence. Okay. What I just said was that you made the remark about violence, American violence, and you rightly made a distinction between what the violence that you sensed when you were growing up, and, uh, which is not the same violence that I sensed. It wasn't violence at the high school level for young students when I grew up. Uh, so there is a difference. I would say when you grew up during the Vietnam War and, you know. Ohio, that, that, yeah. Ohio means something to me that right. doesn't mean the same thing to other people. Yeah. Okay. And, and of course, uh, yes, my, my buddies all went to Vietnam, or a lot of my buddies went to, get, <coughs> to Vietnam. And some didn't come back. Right. Well, I'll also speak to you know, I'm not breaking news here, but like I wrote the whole book and the it, it was out in the world before sort of, um, you know, like the element of sexual violence was there before it erupted into mainstream culture that, oh, there might be a problem here with misogyny and, and violence against women and, and men for that matter. Um, and I do think that like, you, you know, like when I got questions about it in 20, 18, I was kind of that feeling of like looking over your shoulder, like, am I living in the same world as you are? Like, <laughs> like I feel like every day, in Amer especially in American high schools, this is going on, and it is tamped down and put under the rug and, and sort of swept away uh, to benefit people who normally benefit from things. I'll say that. Donc sur le, sur le type de violence, alors vous, vous avez fait la distinction avec votre époque, mais euh, l'époque de, de la guerre du Vietnam est était aussi une époque extrêmement violente. Toutes ces images là, qui, qui, pour la première fois, étaient, euh, étaient projetées sur les écrans de télévision et ont traumatisé toute une nation. Les, les images du massacre de Milaï, etc., tout ça, c'était un choc absolu aussi à l'époque. Mais il est vrai que euh, le, le type de violence dont parle Stephen McClay dans son, dans son livre, on a l'impression qu'il y a... Encore une fois, c'est... Il 
extinguible en fait, c'est vraiment, euh, c'est exponentiel. Euh, et chaque jour, il y, a, il y a un nouveau type de violence, et en particulier, là, il vient de, de, de faire référence à la violence contre les femmes, euh, tout ce qu'on essaye de, qui a toujours existé, mais qu'on euh, qu essaye bien qu'on euh, est beaucoup plus euh, ouvert sur ces questions-là, on essaye toujours de euh, dissimuler. Euh, C'est quelque chose qui fait partie intégrante de son, de son roman aussi. Dans les années 60-70, la violence était dans la ville de New York, ou Detroit, okay, ou Chicago. Oui. La violence n'était pas à New Canaan. Oui. Oui. La violence est descendue dans, euh, à un niveau de, au niveau des petites villes et c'est vraiment euh, répandu absolument partout. Vous aviez une question Yes. So as you said that your novel is a reflection, thank you, of the society, we can say that it's uh, a, real, a realistic actually novel. So that my question is about the choice of names of the characters mm -hmm. and more specifically the character of Bill Ashcraft because I've been working on, uh, not, you know post-colonial literature, yeah. and I've been across this name, you know, all along the way, because he was like, <laughs> helping me a lot. So then I was surprised when I found this name for a character who's addictive and yeah. all this stuff. Yes, thank you. Yeah, sometimes there are just amazing, happy coincidences that land in the laps of literature students. For me, I knew a guy named Ashcraft when I was growing <laughs> up, and I was like, that's a nice name. I like it, I like the way it sounds. I'm going to name this character Bill Ashcraft, and it's, but it's, you know, but look, it's probably like has a long history of colonial, uh, you know, like, so it fits right in, and sometimes you're just lucky that way, I guess. Was that a, a hugely disappointing answer? I'm sorry. In a way, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I figured. You, want, you always want to think authors are like these puppet masters, we're Merlin, like engineering all this brilliance, and it's like, I knew a guy named Bill Ashcraft, and I'm sorry, that's, I, and it's, I feel bad. Ouais, donc le, le nom Ashcraft qui a été choisi donc, pour le, le premier des, des, des protagonistes centraux, le hein, premier chapitre, euh, en fait euh, c'est tout simplement une coïncidence parce qu'il connaissait quelqu'un qui s'appelait Bill Ashcraft et ça n'a rien à voir avec le domaine des euh, études postcoloniales. <rire> uh, maybe an indiscreet question, but you, you inscribe your novel to Andy Finke. Uh, Was it one of your friends involved in, a, in the Middle Eastern uh, Wars, or...? No, it's uh, my, my uncle, my mom's brother, who uh, died in a really terrible accident right before the book came out. So he was a, a great, great guy, a wonderful human being, and a very wholly 100% positive influence on my life. Um, I feel like, you know, it was, it was sort of his demeanor that I, that I like, uh, in one way or another, so admired, um, just because he was incredibly friendly, gregarious, and warm to people. Um, and so it was a real tragedy losing him, and uh, it, it aligned right as my book was coming out, so I, I had to dedicate it to him. Thank you. So he has dedicated his book to Andy Finke, and I don't know why, but I thought that he was one of his comrades who was dead in one of his wars, in one of his wars, in one of his wars, in one of his wars. Et en fait, pas du tout, son, il a dédié ce livre à son oncle qui est décédé juste avant la sortie du livre et qui a eu une, une influence extrêmement positive sur sa vie, sur sa carrière. Voilà. Um, finally, maybe, uh, without unveiling too much of the ending, would you mind reading the final paragraph on page 480? So it doesn't say much about what happens to... <laughs> I for, yeah, I forget. Okay. Um, It starts with how much and ends with unknowable. Okay. <laughs> I, I feel like this is a little spoiler, but that's okay. You guys will still like the book anyway. Um, how much she still had planned. How eager she was to get started. All the people she would have touched, all the hearts she would have broken. She'd wanted to get strange tattoos and pierce the tops of her ears, her tongue, her nipples. Wear garish makeup and collect odd gypsy clothes travel like a wind-borne petal, fight through the muddy crowds of psychedelic bacchanals, write a deranged novel where a woman's periods come to life each month to follow her ghost-like, quipping about dating life and making Marxist critiques of assorted makeup products. She wanted to learn to play the guitar like Ben Harrington and take all her wholesome smut poetry and set it to music, to buy a camera and stalk the globe taking pictures of twisted scenes she found beautiful, and then render the beautiful vistas with menace, danger, and gore. 
She wanted to steal unpredictable books from public libraries in Omaha and hostels in Florence and the shelves of her one-night stands, slipping her lover's most beloved dog-eared copies into her bag and vanishing without leaving a phone number. She wanted to leap over vast chasms and coax others to follow, find herself and her companions all run out of food, matches, maps, water, and opinions so that they'd have to fashion fire from a glasses lens and arguments from half-remembered philosophies. She wanted to lead revolutions with barbaric compassion, face down all immutable phenomena, and charge over the shadowlands between the unknown and the unknowable. Thank you. So, um, I don't know, without revealing more, of course, the things that Lisa said, it's interesting to finish on all that she said. And ça, ça englobe bien sûr euh, cette, euh, la virtuosité, enfin c'est une démonstration de la virtuosité de, de cette technique narrative hein, qu'on retrouve dans le, euh, dans le roman, qui est, qui est vraiment euh, très très impressionnant. Est-ce que vous avez des questions particulières pour Stephen Markley At some point, Ben says that they live in a parallel universe and he can't wait for uh, their real lives to start. And I wondered if you somehow related to stories of the, uh, the, the 1920s and if maybe it had found an echo in how you define generation, your generation? Yeah, no, that's a great question. I, I don't think I was ever thinking of it consciously, certainly, because, I, you know, Gatsby, especially if you're an American student, is, is a book you're reading probably seven times by the time you're through university. Uh, and obviously it is one of those that is a masterpiece and anybody who says otherwise is wrong. So uh, you're, you're, you have that in the back of your head. I do think, like, like my particular age range got defined as a generation by very specific events in a way that, um, you know, that, that you guys will too with the pandemic. But, you know, just this sense of like, oh shit, the first thing that's going to happen in my life is the two biggest skyscrapers in my country are going to fall down and we're going to be launched into this, what feels like a parallel universe of war and, and racism and discontent. Um, you get out of college, and I've said all this already, right? So it does feel like you are suddenly, through no actions of your own, defined by these outside forces. Um, and I, I definitely find, as I get older, this very specific camaraderie with people who know those events from the same vantage point that I do, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. <laughs> thank you. I just wanted to tell you that I absolutely loved your book, oh, and especially the last chapter. It was really touching. Thank you so much. I, I really, that is, that means so much to me. It's so weird to come over here. Like, I, you guys have to understand, I was broke and living with three roommates three years, four years ago, right? Like, I didn't know any of this was going to happen, so to be over here and, like, hear this from people is actually really fucking awesome. <laughs> so I really appreciate that. So, I imagine that you have understood the essential thing. So, there are 3-4 years ago, he lived with three other colocataires and that he was really in the sous and that what happened to him was absolutely extraordinary and he was happy that Voilà, ça, ça allait amener à, à ce type d'échange. Vous avez une question Yes, uh, um, I just wanted to ask a question related to the writing process that you mentioned uh, a while back. Um, I just was wondering whether you have any advice for um, when you're stuck, I don't know, if while writing the book, you had these moments where you felt not motivated or not creative enough to continue the process. So, any word of advice regarding that and um, when you feel to stop or? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think for me, uh, again, that process of making sure I'm sitting down and writing every single day. And what will happen is I'll come to one of these days or three of these days where 
I know everything I've written is not any good, and I can feel it, I can sense it, but I just do it anyway. And I would say, are you writing fiction? No, um, I'm actually writing my thesis. Yeah, <laughs> it's, that's so much harder because I can just make up like, oh, then Jane went to the store and then bought the, the apple, and that's this is great. Okay, everybody will love it. Um, but I do. Totally. One day, so. Yeah. But I, I'd say still, it's, it's a matter of write the bad stuff, get it out, and then keep going. And when you come back to it, you'll have that distance. I think, like, for me, editing is actually the most important step. When you, like, try to get this, this outside view of your work mm -hmm. and say to yourself, okay, here, I know this works, this part is good, and this is garbage, and I need to find a way to fix that. Um, and, 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 you know, I do it on the screen, I print it out, I go at it with a red pen, and I'm just like ruthless and merciless about like, make this better, make this better, make this better. Um, and I think it's not always fun, it's, it's painful, but at the same time, if you keep returning to it, it becomes easier, if that makes any sense. Alors la question portée, je me doutais que c'était en rapport avec une rédaction de, de thèse, en fait. C'était quand on, quand on est totalement bloqué. Qu'est-ce qu'on fait et Donc, euh, euh, j'ai cru comprendre aussi que vous vouliez euh, écrire possiblement de la fiction. Euh, et donc, le conseil, c'est de euh, d'écrire quand même, même si on sent que euh, ce qu'on produit euh, n'est pas euh, d'un niveau satisfaisant. On, confusément, on est quand même assez bon juge de sa propre production. De continuer et de revenir et tout ce travail de révision, euh, comme si on était finalement le euh, que coordonner un livre et qu'on relisait pas forcément d'ailleurs sa propre production mais la production des autres donc cette, cette, cette distance d'un œil qui est presque l'œil de quelqu'un d'autre en fait quand on se relit soi-même euh, et qui revient euh, après pour, pour euh, remédier entre guillemets à ce qu'on a, qu a écrit ça c'est quelque chose qu'on qu peut faire euh, justement si on, a, si on a poursuivi le chemin en fait de l'écriture euh, est-ce que vous avez d'autres questions Thank you. So going back to the process of writing, I always like personally uh, hear about authors when they start working on, on novels, they experience different feelings uh, towards specific things inside the novel. So have you experienced any you know psychological problem or going through those you know experiences of the characters? Yeah. If ever. Yes. Yeah, I mean the book I am finished now and, and will come out uh, next year. You know, I've been working on it for 11 years. I've been working on it with, well, while Ohio was being, being written, like, I've been coming back to it again and again. And it's about this terrifying thing that is totally real, right? Um, and so I'm revisiting the most horrifying moments of this book. Hopefully someday you'll read it and, you know, and you'll be like, oh, and I'm just reading them again and again and again. And like, yeah, you become so close to the characters that you're like going through their, you know, like in, with Ohio, like you're witnessing this awful moment of, Dan Eaton had when his best friends die in front of him, and you're just doing it over and over and over again. And it sounds ridiculous and crazy to say it has like a little bit of a psychological toll, but it sort of does. Um, and I think that in a way is a good thing. It means you're like getting to something that if it if it's impacting you, it could potentially impact other people, right? Um, and yeah, I, is that does that kind of answer your question? Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, it's I'm getting out of this book right now, which is like I'm I'm just beginning to understand how fucking exhausted I am by it uh, and, and how difficult it was to edit, especially in the last two years when it felt like so much of it was coming true. <laughs> so, yeah, you'll see, you'll see, yeah. Donc, juste quelques mots sur, euh, sur cette, euh, cette relation au, à sa propre, sa propre écriture et, et ce que les, ces moments de, parfois de découragement et cette, cette, voilà, ces, ces changements d'humeur qu'on on a forcément quand on rentre euh, euh, dans, le, dans cette caméra obscura là, de, de, de chacun des, des, des personnages. Qu'est-ce qui se passe et, et comment ça nous affecte Comment ça impacte en fait notre, notre mode de vie, etc. Et, euh, et en fait, euh, la, la réponse c'est que s'il n'était pas lui-même euh, affecté par ça, alors euh, il se dit qu'il ne pourrait pas nous affecter. Just a little question about how how do how do how do the 
books germinate in, in your mind? Yeah. In other words, what, what happens? Uh, let's take, it, for example, Ohio. What happens in your, in your mind, in your head, that, yeah. that, 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 that germinates something that you can, can, you can grasp and start writing? Uh, yeah, great question. I, I think so much of a writer's work is done, you know, in the shower, while you're running, while you're out, like it, it, you're just your brain is always working on something. And writers write about like thoughts. In the, we write about what we're obsessed with. We write about what has impacted us, or what not necessarily us in personally, but even people around us. Like sometimes we are compelled by nonfiction writers. This happens all the time. You're compelled by a story you hear about, and you have to know more, right? Um, and I think you just take those elements. And then I always picture it as like this Rubik's Cube in my head that's like whirling around all the time. And then you never know where and you never know when. Sometimes like what the green side just clicks into place and you're like, oh, well that, I should write that down. You know, like that, that kind of feeling. Um, and I think as you do this more and more in your life, it becomes a little easier. You know, you're, you're just, you're used to the power of your imagination. And something, I don't know what it's like in France, but that I find appalling about American education is like how little it, people want to engage children's imaginations. And I was just lucky that I had parents in sort of like a little elementary school that were like, they're like, yeah, write your silly stories and, and we'll bind them into little books for you. And I still have all those little books, right? Um, and I just think like the power of that is real. Uh, and it, it leads to things that, you know, sort of the rote, learn your ABCs and your math can't ever like really accomplish. But in the States, you've got a lot of sessions in, the, in elementary school they don't sure. have that in France. Oh my goodness. They do not have show and tell. Well, how are you supposed to show off your action figures? I don't understand. Like, that's... Not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. Apparently they used to. No, but in the States, <laughs> in elementary school, that's a big... Get up in front of the class, show and tell, what did you do on Easter vacation? Did you have a question? Sorry. Yes. Oh, no, you have to translate. Sorry. Yes, Sorry. just in quelques mots. Euh, en fait, le, le, la question portait sur le, cette substance-là qui est à la naissance du, du processus d'écriture. Où est-ce qu est qu est que Stephen Marclay la, la trouve Et euh, il, la trouve pas, il ne la trouve pas forcément dans des, euh, dans des événements ou des, 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 enfin, des situations qu'il a vécues personnellement, mais parfois euh, dans des situations qui ont affecté ses proches, par exemple. Euh, et il les transforme, euh, il les transforme avec euh, tout, toute l'imagination qu'il a développée justement dans des exercices dont vous parlez, que vous mentionnez, euh, qui commencent très tôt euh, aux États-Unis, dès, euh, dès le primaire en fait, où euh, on vous demande euh, devant, devant l'ensemble de la classe de dire par exemple ce que vous avez fait pendant, pendant les vacances de Pâques. Euh, et de montrer peut-être quelque chose que vous avez rapporté de vos vacances. Et donc, la, la construction du récit commence déjà simplement par euh, le, le, cette, euh, cette, cette dimension orale, là, dans, dans l'oralité. Et euh, lui, il avait la chance d'avoir des, des parents, euh, d'avoir grandi dans une famille qui, qui vraiment euh, le poussait à, euh, à écrire, par exemple, ses propres, ses propres petites histoires. Il a toujours ses livres qui sont d'ailleurs reliés. Euh, ses livres d'enfants où il racontait déjà euh, ce qu'il appelle ses petites histoires idiotes. Voilà. Euh, je vais parler en question français, français parce que non, je ne suis pas très bien en, en anglais. Je veux juste savoir sa manière de retenir le lecteur. Est-ce que s'inspire de. Je, comment il s'appelle, j'ai oublié l'auteur Alain Coubine. Ou bien il s'inspire vraiment chez le, le, le William Smith euh, euh, dessus. Je n'ai, excusez-moi, je n'ai pas compris le premier nom que vous avez cité. Alain Coben. Alain Coben, d'accord. Ça se fait de cette manière. D'accord. Je vais So the, the question, was, you know, we, we, we reverting back to the, uh, to the way that, you know, you, you finally get us hooked. Mm -hmm. we, we, we have to keep reading. So, um, um, do, you, do you think that you do it the Holland Coben way, or rather the Faulkner way? I'm not sure I know what are the different, uh, yeah, you know. Uh, I, I think my theory is that any story can be compelling. Um, 
it's, it's all a matter of, of how you're engaging with the topic. Uh, I just read Julia Barnes' Sense of an Ending, um, which is, you know, a, like a fairly boring story if you like say it out loud. Like, oh, there's a guy in high school and he did it at a... Um, but the way he's spitting it, uh, the, way, the way it's becoming a yarn, you can't help but lean in. So I think it's like mostly like what is making the reader lean in and, and pay attention. Um, and for me, it's, it starts with character and it starts with, you know, what is this character's preoccupation and what is going wrong right now that is, is creating friction. Donc en fait, euh, euh, Arlan Coben, William Faulkner, euh, ce qui l'intéresse, c'est sa façon à lui de, 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 de faire que nous nous prenons au jeu. Et ça commence, d'après lui, euh, par euh, le, 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 le type de, euh, dire de, de, de déroulement mental du personnage. Comment est-ce qu'il réagit à telle euh, situation euh, quand, euh, quelle réponse est-ce qu'il apporte quand il y a, ou quelle attitude est-ce qu'il a dans une, une période de, de tension par exemple et c'est ça qui propulse le récit et qui fait que, que nous-mêmes on, euh, on ne peut plus lâcher le livre d'autres questions I have a question uh, about the theme of the book which is the presence of God. Um, so there are religious uh, strifes in, in the novel. But I was wondering about a certain passage in the last chapter in which you describe the wind of God uh, blowing across Chicago. And I was wondering with those references to typhoons and storms and almost tornadoes, if at this moment you've been uh, describing almost the American wilderness in Ohio as almost a wasteland that is beautified by the character's nostalgia. nostalgia. Is it at this point in Chicago when they reunite a moment of hope and so God can shine the, its light on them again? You, you lit students don't go for easy questions, <laughs> do you? I was <laughs> so sorry. Um, I, I think that what you struck upon in your question was the sense of, maybe hope is not the word I would use, but the sense of, of rejoining. Uh, it's two characters, I do this without spoilers, it's two characters sitting down together who uh, were part of this fragmented group and suddenly they're having a moment of connection. Um, and that moment of connection is, is powerful and it should leave the reader exiting the book with the sense that like, oh, this is like, you know, this was a moment between two people that matters. Uh, and wherever they're going, it's, it's not back to the wasteland. It's, it's, it's forward, it's into um, agency uh, and, and taking control of, of the events of their lives in a way they didn't have control before. Does that help at all? Absolutely, because I had a second question. Oh, great. <laughs> was, uh, this anticipation yeah. of the second book, is it connected to this? weather scene of absolute Armageddon outside when they're sitting in a cafe? Is it a theme that you're going to develop in the next books, maybe? You are so smart, that sucks, all right? That's <laughs> fucking creepy, okay? That's, yeah. Oh my god. And I just read it in a train this morning in a cry, so it was, I'm really into this chapter uh, right now. Yeah. No, I, yeah, that's exactly right. Um, yeah, no, I mean, it's the, uh, the new book and the old book, Ohio, were, as I said, being written concurrently. Um, and as I was finishing Ohio, I was already halfway into the deluge. And I was like, you know, <sighs> dreaming on where is it, where is all this going? Where are these characters going? And it's into the storm, uh, as we all are, right? And, and yet I didn't want to leave them in, in that sense of, of just pure dread about it. There, there is this, this moment of, you know, uh, you know, don't count us out yet, I guess, um, to put it a little quarterly. Uh, but yeah, and, and that is what the next book is. It's like, what do we do once we're in the storm? Um, and that's the uh, sort of the progression from Ohio to the deluge. Uh, you should write a paper about that. That's good. That is, wow. 
Alors, juste quelques mots là, sur, sur cette, ces, ces questions. Euh, c'est vrai qu'il y, y a une dimension euh, lyrique et atmosphérique dans le roman, et en particulier euh, à la fin du, du roman, où euh, les deux personnages qui, qui se revoient euh, ont vraiment un moment de, de, de partage intense, en fait. Ils se retrouvent et il y a vraiment un moment d'échange qui est très très fort. Et en même temps, à l'extérieur, on a ce, ce déchaînement des éléments euh, sur, sur l'Ohio. Et donc, le, euh, une, enfin, L'une des questions, c'était est-ce que euh, ça fait référence, par exemple, à ce qu'on appelle « the American wilderness euh, », ce, ce sens de euh, la, la nature sauvage américaine qui se déchaîne à l'extérieur. Euh, et une partie de la réponse, c'est qu'en fait, dans le nouveau roman qui s'appelle « Le déluge euh, », qui, qui est totalement euh, euh, tourné vers donc, cette, 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 cette idée euh, à la fois métaphorique et réelle de euh, la tempête, euh, ce nouveau roman, il l'écrivait euh, en partie en même temps que euh, Ohio. Et donc il y, y a vraiment un lien là entre, euh, entre cette dimension, de, faute d'un meilleur terme, je dirais atmosphérique, euh, et ce qui, ce qui se développe maintenant, euh, la, la, le lien à la American Wilderness, la, la, la nature sauvage américaine. Ça, c'est pas au sens où on entend, par exemple, dans les westerns, dans les. Voilà, dans, dans la nature sacrée, avec euh, la marche vers l'ouest, euh, la, la destinée manifeste, etc. Je crois que ça, ce, ce côté-là n'est pas du tout présent. Là. Euh, et la question divine aussi. Ça, la, la, la... On a l'impression que la lumière de Dieu euh, éclaire cette scène, en fait. Hein. C'est ça. Hein, C'est euh, oui. un vent soufflé par Dieu. Oui, un vent soufflé par Dieu. Oui. On aurait dit que Dieu soufflait un peu. Je ne sais plus comment il le dit en anglais, mais. Oui. Euh, en gros, euh, il explique que le, le vent semble être euh, soufflé par Dieu lui-même entre les skyscrapers. Donc c'est la première fois, je crois, dans le livre, en tout cas, comme je l'ai lu très vite, ça a été assez marqué, oui. par le fait que la première mention de Dieu par le narrateur oui. se soit dans cette nouvelle nature, après les événements, euh, cinq ans après les, les événements du livre. Oui. Donc, je, je me disais, on n'est pas dans la nature de la wilderness, non. mais on est dans une nouvelle... Euh, relation au terrain, au territoire ouais. américain. Et c'est ouais. un peu le centre de ma question. Ouais. Quelque chose, une, vrai, une relation nouvelle au territoire et à la... Euh, pas à la nature sauvage, au sens où, encore une fois, on l'entend euh, au 19 e etc. Ouais. Ah, D'ailleurs, c'est une autre question très intéressante. La, no la nature sauvage dans ouais. le royaume, ouais. c'est un lac artificiel, c'est oui, quoi euh, absolument. En c'est dans des routes, mm -hmm. peut-être que je puis prendre oui, allez-y. I was really interested in the way I'm studying for my thesis. I'm studying the wilderness in westerns, and I was really surprised and interested by the way you depict nature in your book with the artificial lake, uh, which again foreshadows the deluge because it, it uh, engulfed a small town, and the fact that uh, we don't mention God for the whole book except in the voice of the characters, and it comes back when you you're in the city. Yeah, I guess it's fun that the people who read your book are smarter than you, but that's, I don't know, it's a suppose. It comes from a place of love, okay? Thank you, thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, no, that's all very perceptive, and thank you for, uh, yeah. So, the idea of another nature, not the nature sauvage, in the sense where we hear it, is also something that was represented in the book, because, finally, it doesn't have to be revealed, but... Euh, ça se termine, comme Johan vient de le dire, sur, euh, euh, le, disons, la référence à un lac artificiel. Et il euh, la, la, y a un lien direct avec la notion de déluge, parce que ce lac artificiel, pour être créé justement, il a euh, englouti toute une ville, en fait, qui était là avant. Euh, on va dire ça comme ça, c'est comme dans Deliverance de John Bourman, il euh, y a cette dimension absolument horrifique derrière, hein, qui, qui est bien là, euh, et, et qui, euh, qui, encore une fois, transforme le, 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 le rapport des personnages à la nature. C'est une nature qui est fabriquée, en fait, et qui, pour autant, n'en est pas moins terrifiante. So it's a, uh, it's a it's type of, of... It's not... It's fake wilderness, somehow. Yeah, but the, the relation of the, of the characters to this fake wilderness is also powerful and, and scary. Yeah. yeah. Is it? Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know what, what more to add than, um, 
you know, uh, sort of the nostalgia these characters have for a place that is, uh, you know, ultimately fabricated, uh, a fabricated piece of wilderness that they no nevertheless have some kind of deep loyalty to. Bien, je crois que ça va être le mot de la fin. Thank you so much. It Thank was you so much. Fascinating. Thank you very much. Thank you.